What's up guys, I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This Build That and today I'm going to show you how to make this mobile lathe stand. This thing has a ton of storage. I've got five drawers and a door. It can hold lathe accessories, your blanks, your turning kits, and even your turning tools down there on the end. I'll show you exactly how I did it. Stay tuned. The lathe stand is built from two sheets of three quarter inch plywood. I broke down the plywood in my driveway into manageable pieces per my cutting diagram before I brought it into the shop. The plans, which include the cutting diagram, are available through the link down below in the description. I started by cutting the parts for the cabinet to width, then I used my table saw sled to cut them to length. If your sled is too narrow like mine, you might have to remove the front fence for this operation. The height of the sides will make the center line of the lathe even with my elbow after final assembly. To make sure the top would be level, I lined up the center divider with the side and then I marked for the cut. I'll be using this referential measuring method versus a tape measure throughout the build and this will help keep things perfectly aligned. Next I ripped some strips for the top supports which will hold the sides and the center divider together. The cabinet has a side of 19 and a quarter inch drawers on the left and a 13 and a half inch drawer on the right. I cut the top supports to size for the left side first. Then I used the pieces to mark the cut for the right side supports. I made the cuts over at the miter saw and then I moved on to assembly. I use pocket hole joinery for the case like I do for most of my shop furniture. And I clamp the pieces in place and then attach the sides to the bottom using glue and screws. I laid the top supports on the bottom of the cabinet to position and hold the center divider in place while I secured it to the base with screws. Then I attached the top supports to the sides and the center divider. And as a side note here, make sure that you offset the pocket screws on the left and right supports where they meet that center divider. I used a full 3 quarter inch plywood for the back and this adds weight and strength to the stand. It also gave me a reference to pull the case into square while I was working my way around the cabinet driving in the screws. With the base complete I moved on to the drawers. I started by ripping all the drawer parts to width on the table saw. The drawers are all 18 inches deep so I cut each one of the sides to length at the same setting. Now to get your drawers exactly the right size and make sure there's no play, you only need one measurement. I'm going to measure the front of this and that comes in right at a little bit under 21 and 3 quarters. So all we have to do now is use that plus the thickness of the drawer slides and the thickness of the plywood and we'll know exactly how wide we need our front pieces to be. I subtracted one inch for the thickness of the drawer slides and I set my miter saw stop to just under 20 and 3 quarters of an inch. Then I put two pieces of plywood against the stop to represent the thickness of the sides. Now I can cut using this setup and get the exact width that I needed. I took the pieces over to the cabinet for a test fit and it worked out great. I cut the rest of the front and backs for the left side, then I repeated the same steps to cut the front and the back for the right side drawer. With all the drawer parts cut to size, I went back to the table saw to cut grooves for a quarter inch bottom panel. I started with the blade raised a quarter of an inch and the fence set to a quarter of an inch. And I ran all the fronts and sides through. I moved the fence over to the right to get a groove that fit the plywood panel and then I ran all the fronts and sides through again to establish that groove on each piece. For the drawer backs I kept the fence at the same setting and I raised the blade to cut through the whole piece. This will let me slide the bottom panel in from the back during assembly. I'm putting these drawers together with pocket screws. Now one of the things about pocket screws is if you don't have it clamped super tight they're going to move on you. So I'm going to use these jet parallel clamps here. These actually work really well to keep everything super tight so that it's not going to move when you screw them together. It makes the assembly a lot more foolproof. I glued the side of each drawer, checked the faces for square, and then I tightened down the clamps. A couple screws in each side gives a strong joint when the glue dries. I assembled all five drawers and then I went back and I cut the bottom panels to size over at the table saw. I finished off the drawers by sliding in the panels from the back and attaching each one with the pan head screws. Before installing the drawers I attached 3 inch casters to the cart. You could also use leveling feet here if you don't want yours mobile. I'm using 18 inch full extension drawer slides to mount all five of these different drawers. And I cut a few different spacers, 3 and 3 eighths, 1 and an eighth, and 3 eighths of an inch. With the combination of all these I'm going to be able to 
space out all of the drawer slides on the side as well as the drawers in the middle for mounting. If you have a drawer extension mounting jig, then that works just as well too. For the first slide on the bottom, I used a 3 8 of an inch spacer along with a large 3 and 3 8 of an inch spacer to position the drawer slide. I pre-drilled and attached the slides with the included screws. After that, I just used the large spacer to position the next three slides. I flushed the hardware up with the front of the cabinet, and then I attached the slide and moved on to the next one. To attach the drawers, I started with the 3 8 inch spacer to get the bottom drawer off of the base. I pulled out the drawer and the slide, and attached the first screw. Then I pulled it out a little bit further and attached another screw into the middle. With two screws, the slide is locked in place, so then you can take the drawer out and secure that third screw in the back. I used the one and an eighth inch spacer to position the next drawer, and then I repeated the process all the way up until all the drawers were in. For the drawer on the right, I clamped on some supports, and I positioned the slide and the drawer even with the one on the left. Next up, I cut the false drawer fronts. I cut a piece of ply to the size of the cabinet front, then I cut each individual drawer and the door out in order for a continuous grain look. To mount the drawer fronts, I drilled oversized holes in each drawer. I wanted an eighth of an inch reveal around the drawers, so I cut another spacer here to help me out. I used the eighth of an inch spacer to position the bottom drawer front, then I clamped the piece in place and secured it with two screws from inside. I repeated the same process all the way up the cabinet, using the spacer to establish the reveal, until I had all four drawer fronts attached. I used conceal hinges to mount the door on the lathe stand. You can use templates included with the hardware to install the hinges, but I used a jig here to make drilling the cups for the hinges a little quicker. I installed the hinges to the door, then I pre-drilled the side, and then secured the hinges to the door cabinet with a screwdriver. I really love how this continuous grain turned out, so much so that I couldn't really decide on the drawer pulls. So I think I'll add some down the road, I just want to make sure that I don't hide the beauty of this continuous grain. I made the top from a double thick lamination of 3 quarter inch plywood. I cut the parts to size, leaving the bottom sheet about a quarter inch larger than the top on all the sides. To laminate the pieces, I used regular wood glue and I spread it evenly across the bottom, then I dropped on the top piece. I grabbed everything that wasn't bolted down and I just threw it on top to weigh down the sheet. I also threw a few clamps on there for good measure. After the glue was dry, I took the top outside and trimmed the bottom piece even with the top using a flush trim bit on my router. To trim out the top, I cut some maple hardwood into one and a half inch wide strips. I cut the strips to length on the miter saw, but I left the front and the back pieces a little long to be trimmed off later. I cut the short sides to fit and then I glued and clamped everything together. Now an extra pair of hands here or some dowels or biscuits would have been nice so I could position those end pieces, but after a few hectic minutes, I got everything clamped up. When the glue was dry, I cut the overhanging trim even with a flush cut pull saw, and then I sanded the top flush where needed, and I also put a small round over on the edges. I sized the base so I would have an overhang on all the sides for some accessories later, so I positioned the top and I clamped it in place, and then I screwed it to the base through the top supports. I laid out where I wanted the jet lathe to go, and then I drilled the mounting holes using the measurements from the manual. Then I secured it with bolts from underneath. To hold my turning tools, I grabbed a piece of leftover maple, and I drilled holes for the carbide tools and a slot for my parting tool. And this is going to work great now, but I can always make a new one down the road if my tools or needs change. I loaded up the drawers with some of my turning accessories and blanks. I'll come back in a later video and make some dividers and organizers to make everything nice and neat. This mobile stand takes care of all my lady storage needs and then some. I also sized the top for dust collection in the back and a temporary landing zone for accessories to the right of the lathe. I want to give a big thank you to Jet Woodworking for partnering with me on this build. This Jet 1221 variable speed lathe is a huge upgrade to the mini lathe that I had before. It's got a lot more capacity and the variable speed is going to make things a lot easier and a lot safer. I can't wait to do some more turning projects and share them with you as well. If you want to build your own version of this lathe stand, there's a link down below in the description to the plans. There's also links to everything that I use to make the stand. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and if you're not subscribed already, I'd love to have you as part of the team. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.